when you read a book, it comes to life. Yesterday. Alright. Oh, I think I had a bad one. <laughs> it's like alien, isn't it? This stuff is squishy. I think I can have. It's just it's like it's been blown up. Blown up? Look, Exploded. it's like squashed. <laughs> oh. oh sorry. There's hand. And there's the beef. Bears podcast episode 19. Amazing. Amazing. Last it's just time. zipping her up because it's so crazy. Yeah, it is. It's not as cold actually as last time. No. That was probably freezing. We've travelled about um, 60 or 70 miles to the north. Uh, we are now on the edge of the empire. Oh. If you think how big the Roman Empire was, it stretched from um, the far reaches of Africa right the way across uh, to us here on the old border to Scotland. Now, if you look across there, what we've got here is a bridge. This is only the second bridge. We showed you the first bridge yesterday. Um, this is the second bridge um, in Britain that still remains. There's obviously loads. Um, and this actually follows the line of Hadrian's Wall. Can you see the fencing back there? That's the line of Hadrian's Wall. That's the abutment uh, on the east side of the bridge. And then over it comes to us here picking up and running off into the fort that we're going to go look at in a minute. Now the first bridge was built when the wall was first built and it was quite small but then it was replaced um, around about um, one, I think it was about 130, 140 AD. They put in a much bigger road bridge um, so you could physically get, um, you could get carts across and all sorts. Um, and if you look round at that as well, just have a look down here. We spotted these a second ago, didn't we? Did you see them, Bryony? Yeah. See the big stone down there? And there's another one there, and there's another one in the river. And this is the River Tyne. Um, those stones are from the superstructure of the bridge. So from the very top of the bridge, the bit that people used to walk over. And then over the other side, you can see sort of what we showed you last time, uh, which was the abutment um, at, where were we last time? I forgot the name of it. Pierce Bridge. Thank you, Bryony. Well done. <laughs> or Morbium. Um, but today is all about... Where are we? Justice. Correct. Um, uh, the it's Roman name for Chester's. The yeah. Roman name for Chester's is Salernum. And I think I've spotted over there a Roman bathhouse and a perfect spot for a picnic. They're a bit whiffy. <laughs> <laughs> she smells of cheese and onions. Nice. That's normal for Bryony, isn't it? No, it's not cheese and onions, it's cheese. But it smells of cheese and onions to me, I don't know why. Yeah. This definitely was a good spot for a picnic. It was. Until the sun went in. Yeah, and it's now freezing. So, here we are at Salernum Roman Fort. Uh, this was built around about 120 AD. That's a long time ago, isn't it, right? It's around about the time when Mummy was born. You're <laughs> old. You're old. Well, that's a bit harsh. Um, so, initially when this was built, 
they didn't anticipate there being any forts. So it started out life um, as just a, a tiny little turret. Uh, but then about two, three years after they finished building the wall, uh, they realized that they were gonna need uh, something a little bit more substantial. Uh, so they put this fort in. Um, and it was a cavalry fort and it was manned by auxiliaries. Um, and the auxiliaries uh, were called Dalmatians bridles. <laughs> well, the Dalmatians, that used to be a, a part of the world. No, it was it's in, a dog. No, it's not. It it's was in. It was in Croatia. And the great thing about Dalmatians, I was telling Kay earlier, uh, Dalmati, which is, um, I think it's the Dalmatian language uh, for themselves. So it's like we're English, they were Dalmati in their own language. And Dalmati means shepherd. Um, and they were famous in ancient times because they would go and they would find rich fertile land and they would turn it into um, places for sheep. So people used to hate them because they'd like come and ruin farmland and all sorts. So anyway, Dalmatians were here. And, um, Dalmatians, they fought against Romans for, for quite a few years. Uh, but then when they were eventually succumbed, when they were conquered by the Romans, they ended up being probably their most loyal source of troops. Um, it's getting chilly though, isn't it? It is chilly. Yes. I want to go over there. Do you want to go and have a look over there? Well, I think we should take everyone for a quick look around the fort. Do you? Yeah, let's do it. stately home. <laughs> that was bought uh, by the Clayton family in the 1800s um, and all the land which we're going to show you um, in this video was landscaped very much like Chatsworth. Uh, so it was a beautiful country house with beautiful gardens. Now the Clayton's son, John Clayton, he realised there was something down here and in 1843 he started digging and the first thing he dug was this, this thing here. This is the West Gate. And the West Gate was the gate that then led out off over on Hadrian's Wall. So the wall would have ran out directly from here. You can actually see it. There is Hadrian's Wall. It's right there on the far side. Are you getting it in okay? Yeah? So there's Hadrian's Wall. So Hadrian's Wall ran out that way. They built their lovely house, did a bit of digging, and he realised there was something here. And what he found was pretty unbelievable. And we're going to show it to you later on in the show. They always do that. That's not fair. I want to see more of it now. I've only shown a tiny little bit. Mm. That house looks posh though. It does. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Guess what? It was for sale. <gasps> yeah. You found it afterwards, hey, didn't you? I could post a link, couldn't I, in the episode thread? I think it was under offer though. But hopefully it'll still be there. Look, yeah. if it's still there, I'll post a link in the uh, comment in, in the what's it called show notes in show the notes. stuff below so it'll either be on Ravelry or it'll be on YouTube underneath in case anybody has a spare what was it six, six and a half million, million pounds. pounds no idea what that would be in dollars a whole bunch uh, if you've got a spare I think is it when we when you looked it was under offer so I think somebody had bought it we were so annoyed if we yeah if only I mean if only <laughs> And I've just got that spare change out of my pocket. And what we could have done was, we could have had it for the weekend. We could. Just maybe one weekend, maybe a month. Yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, you wouldn't want to be there too much. You it's wouldn't. not big enough. Not really. It, it didn't look big enough to me. But it said, didn't it? It said nine bedrooms. It, it, I said only nine bedrooms. But it did contradict itself because it said in the top, it said nine bedrooms. But then below it said 12 bedrooms. Uh, I would, uh, more, yeah, 12 more you know, but it showed you some pictures of the like the drawing room, and it was very Downton Abbey. It wasn't as old as that, was it? I don't. I don't how old? When was it built? It was built the late seventeen hundreds. Oh, so it's much older. Well, I don't know how old the house is on Downton Abbey actually, but it was very that era. 
It wasn't, didn't look The quite... house on Downton Abbey that's set in Yorkshire that's actually I know, that's on the why outskirts confu- of London. Yeah, that's why it confuses me, because the Downton Abbey house, High Clare Castle, is actually very much down south. Yeah. And it's they so filmed as used... if it's in Ripon, which is North Yorkshire. They could have used Ripley. That's a castle. But I'm telling you, they use that to save money on, on actors travelling because they'll be able to drive out yeah. of London for the day yeah, back probably. in a day because I think the village the that they use as well is somewhere down south it's isn't Oxford it? it's Oxford right yeah yeah so that'll be why okay, it's annoying though if you because it is clever how they cut these things together because yeah. you know they, they walk out the house they walk down the drive yeah. they're into the village yeah. it's actually 150 miles up the road <laughs> <laughs> it's very clever I love it so what were you knitting on that looked what very nice I was very excited. You won't let me tell, will you? You've not even told me what it is. You know what it is. Am I allowed to talk about it then? Well, it's up to you. It's your thing. Well, what I was knitting on, you can probably all tell, what I was knitting on is a shawl. And I'm kind of in the process of of designing. Well, I have kind of designed it. Been um, through a few It's been prototypes. through a few incarnations, yeah. And this is what I've been knitting on when I've said to you, sorry, I've got an itchy ankle. I'm like you with your itchy ankles. Um, Hold on. We can't just say that and just hang it out there. <laughs> it's not that I don't... Oh, yeah, it's not that I don't wash. I have changed since last episode. Oh, yeah. So he's got the same top on. I just happen to really like this, this top. Um, no, Dan's on a drug stuff. still. Um, a blood thinner. Um, for the blood clot that's had on a, my lung. He had a blood clot on his lung, which we probably think is gone now. I'll find um, out next month. Yeah, he's got a scan next month. But he's been taking these blood thinners and they've been making you itchy, yes. haven't they? I, to, to start with, it sort of came on after I did my, after I twisted my leg. Oh. Um, and I thought that it was just some sort of muscular thing right. after that bit of swelling. But then when it didn't go, we mentioned it, didn't we, last time we were there, and she looked it up and yeah, said, Yeah, because it's a new drug as well. It's only been out a couple of years, I think. But that was listed as one of the side effects, itchiness. Yeah, yeah. So. and smelliness. Well, yeah. That's my excuse. That's your excuse, isn't it? Go on. What was I saying? You. Yes, so um, I wanted to, when we started doing the kind of outs and abouts, and I thought it would be nice to maybe try and design something that was along the lines of some of the outs and abouts that we were doing, some of the favourite places to knit. And I thought of this design a while back and I thought, mm, shall I have a go? Because, you know, I've done the toys, obviously, but I've never done anything garment-wise or accessory-wise. And I just thought, you know, maybe I'll have a little go. So I knit a sample up um, and didn't really like quite a major element of it so but I, I knit the complete like thing like the whole design no no it was um um the body the body of it I did in garter stitch on the first one and I actually although it was nice and squishy and everything I decided to change it to stocking stitch is that the one that you put on me yeah it's like a bloke yeah, it's very, well, yeah, it is. You know, you wore it and... I like uh, it. Well, I mean, we'll show it you when maybe next episode I'll, I should have finished the final sample and then I'll show you. Um, but I, did, I wanted to, to knit a DK weight shawl. I wanted something, because the, the theme, I'll go back a bit, the theme that I was using for this one was... Rome and Romans and Roman Britain, I suppose I should say, really, Roman Britain. And I wanted something that, not that I thought a Roman would wear, because clearly they wouldn't wear a hand knit shawl, but something kind of nice and cosy and squishy and... That would keep you warm. That would keep you warm. If you were on... Should you be walking along a Roman wall. So I did this first one and although... I really liked it. I thought, mm, do you know what? I'm going to try it with the background section of it in stocking stitch instead of garter. So I knit another one with a stocking stitch um, either side section. I won't go into too much detail, so I'll show you next time. Because it, it, give it, it gave it a bit more drape. And although I like garter stitch and it's very squishy, it is. it does constrict your fabric, doesn't it? And especially when it's a heavier weight. So I wanted something a bit more drapey. 
so I re-knit it and really liked it. I knit it in Madeleine Tosh DK, um, the single ply one. I think that's called DK, I think it is. The other thing I wanted to do was I wanted to choose a colour that reminded me of Romans and I wanted something quite regal. And you told me that the emperors always wore purple and only the emperors wore purple because I think it was very expensive to yes. get the colour purple. Yeah. Oh, that's a film. Okay. So I thought, right, okay. So I went hunting around various yarn sort of um, online stores and I really wanted to use a UK yarn as well. So I did find one. I stumbled across it. Actually, I gave in in the end because I've been looking so much. And then, of course, as always happens is when you stop looking you find something and I came across this yarn and it's from Five Moons and it is it's a DK and it's 50-50 merino silk and it's absolutely beautiful isn't it the colourway is just good it's really deep tonal purple and that's what I was knitting on weren't you wearing a prototype I might have been wearing the prototype in, yes, the out and about. And what was that yarn? That was That's the Madeleine Tosh DK. No, it's, the colourway is Celadon. It's, I mean, everybody will probably know what Celadon colourway is. It's like a very tonal, um, pale sort of blue, sea blue maybe. No, maybe not sea blue. Greeny, bluey, greyy. It's hard to describe the colour. It's a really beautiful colour. So I'm halfway through knitting the purple one which I think is the one that will go on the pattern so I'm not putting any pressure on myself as to when I'm going to get this done it'll be done when it's done kind of thing but that that is what I've mainly been working on these past few weeks which is why you've kind of maybe not seen a massive amount of other things being knit on no how exciting so it's 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 two it's a two skein twin skein twin skein Twin. And we have chosen a name, and we will talk about that next time, I think. Okay. Ooh. Out and about. So much has happened in the last two weeks. Has it? it well, it has, has, isn't it? It feels seemed like... It's a very long two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> it's dragged. Yes. No, we like um, so much, really so much has happened. So much, in fact, that me and Bryony got a little trip away. You did? We went to Northumberland. Yeah, school half term this week. It's Friday today, so she's back on Monday, which she's been off all this week. So, and I mean, it's funny because that's up um, the same way West Past Hadrian's Wall. Yeah. Um, and Northumberland's great because it's got lots of castles and things. Um, but we went to Walkworth, which it's really nice, but it doesn't do it for me. Like, um, well, it's funny you said that because we've had a holiday in Northumberland, didn't we? When Brian was, a lovely was spot. about going on for four, she wasn't quite four, was yeah. she? And it was a beautiful spot. It was, we got a little fisherman's cottage. There was a row of them, Budle wasn't Bay. there? Budel Bay. If anybody knows it, it's Budel Bay in Northumberland. And there was this little row of fishermen's cottages, what must have been. And they'd been converted, this whole row, into holiday cottages. And we got one. But With that bed that the feet were higher oh than the head. Oh my goodness. We woke up the first morning with splitting headaches. We couldn't yeah, work out what it, it was and then we realised. So did we slope. sleep the other way around? It was on a slope. No, we didn't. I don't know what we did. I we weren't comfortable all week. And it was also, I was wheezing a bit, wasn't I? Yeah, it was very damp. And it was right on the beach. It was beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. The setting. You literally walked out and you were on the dunes. Great setting. It was absolutely beautiful. But these houses... That fog. Yeah, there was a lot of sea um, When we sea arrived. Fog. What's it called? What's the sea fog called? Fret. Fret. Oh, yeah. my gosh, you couldn't see anything. No, for about four days, wasn't it? And then yeah, it cleared. Yeah, and then it cleared. And it was beautiful. It was beautiful, but the house was really, really damp and dark, you know. It was quite depressing being in the house. It was well appointed. Yeah. But just... It, and it smelt of, of dog as well. Yeah. I'm sorry to say. That was just me. Yeah. <laughs> So, anyway, anyway, enough of this anyway. chit chat. <laughs> Kay Jones, what's on your needles? What's on my needles is I haven't picked these up for ages, and then um, this week I just thought um, I just wanted something really kind of that I didn't need to think about. I've not been I've not been well this week, um, and I, ha I had two or three days I think where I didn't knit at all. Dun, um, dun. Well, that's how not myself I was. Um, but I thought, oh, I'm just going to pick this up and just knit on it. And I'd only, I'd not even finished the leg. 
and I'll show you where I am now. The yarn is Regia and I got this, I spoke about it actually a few episodes back. I got it from Cricklade Crafts. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, here we go. So let me find the ball bandy. It is Regia Design Line by Kristen Nicholas. That one and the colour, I'll get this right because if I'm remembering right, Farb is colour in German. Yes. Is that right? That is colour. <gasps> so the colour. Thank you to all the viewers who helped us. Yeah. Um... And I've been told a few times and I still get Farb and Party mixed up, but I heard it recently again. I can't remember where. But anyway, it's colourway number 03312. I'll just show you that. And I am I'm on the foot of wow. sock one. So I did the the leg. Here we go. Oh, it looks nice. Oh, that's good. The colour just jumped so you can see it. Yeah. So leg. Just I've just done a standard slip stitch heel turn, gusset, and I'm on the foot. And I didn't um, pull from the other end or anything like that for the heel, I just went with it. And I think because the the striping is so kind of ran, you know, random, and I don't, I mean, although you can tell here, it doesn't fully continue because you sort of repeat this bit here. I don't think it really matters, Dan won't notice. So for his socks, I always do um, 72 stitches on a two and a half mil. And then I do, to make sure I have enough yarn, and now I have a little formula for the row numbers. And I scribble down, so I do four, 20 rows rib, 45 rows leg, heel flap, gusset turn. And then to take me down to the toe decreases, I'll have 135 rows in total from after the rib here all the way down so I count the rows and then when I get to 100 I put a little dicky dewy thing in um, so when I get to 135 rows I then do the toe and I know that that fits you so that's just sock one yay I like those so yeah I've done loads on those and I did all in one day I did um, from about here all the way through the gusset decreases cool yeah nice so that's that Dan Jones that's not a bad effort yeah I well not remembered not a bad all effort all things considered she that got is there in effort. the end yes yes Ooh. oh that's the coffee machine it's got a mind of its own look at it and I forgot <laughs> it's making itself a coffee it randomly cleans itself which is cool <laughs> we like things like that things that randomly clean myself that sounds like me that would be good yeah it would be good wouldn't it if you randomly cleaned yourself but i do randomly clean myself you do so dan jones yes oh your oh. needles yes that's nice well i hadn't even started this last time we spoke um i think we were only talking about how um the lovely deb i think you had started it you had had i you'd done like a tiny bit of the garter can you remember because you oh. said a garter's boring can you remember i apologize you see, I didn't even consider that a start because I was doing garter mm. and it's so boring. <laughs> so I'm into, I'm, I'm into it good and proper now. Check that out. You are. Look this, at that. It's upside down. Oh, I don't suppose it matters. Ladies and gentlemen, is the hand break cow. It's only a single loop because I'm thinking, um, like we said a couple of episodes ago, gent who perhaps doesn't want to wear too much knitted stuff because he thinks mm. it's maybe a little bit girly. We're going to win him over. Uh, I by... like a single loop. It's yeah. easy to wear, isn't it? And you could wear that with a suit jacket. Um, you, you totally could. If you were out and about, you were on your way somewhere, you had gloves. Sometimes I have that on. I have my suit jacket on and I have gloves and I have a scarf on. That's, that's totally the look. That was totally the look of students quite recently. Okay. Suit jacket and scarf. And jeans. I believe you. It's a fact. Um, so I'm thinking uh, single loop, uh, but then, I mean, you totally could do a double loop. Oh, um, well, yeah. And w what's so great about it is it's absolutely picking up on what is so addictive 
about the amazing Susie Gawley uh, bankhead design. Um, and, and I think what's cool about it is as well, because it's uh, not quite so repetitive, because you are moving the, mm. the, uh, the pearl along um, every other row, um, it, it just keeps the brain mm. even more active. Um, so this is progressing nicely. When do you think I'll finish that? Gosh, I mean, you're doing really well on it. It might be done for next, because you were only down here. Yeah. So it might be done for the next podcast. The way I'm going. Yeah. I'm motoring. Because what we need to do yeah. is just watch your yarn, because you, we don't want you to just carry on and carry on and carry on, and then you run out and you've not done the other border. Oh, no. <laughs> That'd be a disaster. So I just need to keep an eye on that. I was just saying to Kay as well how... I, I mean, as usual, I, there's no reason to doubt that it's not going to be the most amazing yarn to be. Do you know what I love it's about lovely. it? Because it just changes and, and gets a bit thinner it's, and then gets a bit fatter. It, it does, feels but not good a on whole the fingers. Lot. It, no. I mean, she's, it's very, you know, evenly spun. It feels great on the fingers. It's just nice. Yeah, I, when I cast on with it, I thought it was felt really nice. Yeah, it's just an enjoyable thing it to is. have running through your hands. Don't even ask. Why? No. <laughs> so that's what's on my needles. Cool. Oh, before I start a row. Yeah, perfect. You see? It's like it's planned. It is. It okay, Jones. So not. What else is on your needles? Oh, that's, that's a new one. What else is on your needles? It's a new catchphrase. <laughs> what shall I do next? Right. That's a doggy clap. Oh, it is. Oh, anybody in the UK who's got small children... Um, you know, Bryony's a bit older now, but she still watches CBeebies. Um, there's a, fa a fairly new program that's just started called Hey Dougie, D-U-G-G-I-E. It's like a cartoony thing, and it is the most fabulous thing you've ever seen. Sweet. It is hilarious. It's really good. Dougie is a dog, and he runs like a daycare, doesn't yes. he? And yes. all these other little animals that they're called squirrels. Yeah. They're, they're not squirrels. <laughs> They're like, uh, there's a hippo and an al a crocodile and all these other little yeah, baby the cutest animals. Thing, the cutest thing about all of it is, isn't the crocodile adopted? The crocodile's mum, who comes to pick him up, is an elephant. I mean, it's so, <laughs> so cute. he's adopted. <laughs> it's so cute. And they all go every day to Dougie's house and they get badges every day for something they've done. Yeah. So like the cake badge or yeah. the hair badge, they were doing his hair one day. But it's it's just the funniest thing. I like and Dougie doesn't speak. No. He just woofs. Woof, woof. So he does that. So. That's a good question. I like straight in Dougie speak. Do you love that cowl? Woof. <laughs> just, I mean, any, like I say, anybody in the UK will have, with children will know what we're talking about. But I mean, I don't know if you can get it on whatever, iPlayer. Might, I mean, sure I'll have a look might. on YouTube. If there's anything on YouTube, I'll link it in. But th there can always be issues, um, as so many people have found out recently with the whole copyright thing. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. There can be issues cross-country as well with, with, with stuff. But, I mean, if there is anything up, I'll post it in. Yeah. If it doesn't work in your country, it's going to be because of copyright. Um, but it is the sweetest programme. Look it out. Yes. Give it a go. Yes. You won't regret it. Right, and I did something that I thought I was going to regret, but actually I've come to love it. No, that was on the 15th of August in... Oh, gosh, I can't believe you remember the actual day we got married. You don't normally. <laughs> That's shocking. That's shocking. That's shocking. Oh, we're very, very digressy, aren't we, today? Right. What do you mean today? Well, that's true. Yeah. Have you not watched the Baker of Bears podcast before? Go on, what is it? Right, well, do you know how I've spoken before, and I've tried to make, to do this before, right? And I said on a previous podcast that I tried it and failed. And, of course, I'm talking about the mitered square sock blanket. It has very, various different names online with the patterns. But you all know what I'm talking about. And it was the reason why I started my crochet one, which I'll talk about in a minute, but it kind of always bugged me that I'd tried this a couple of times and just failed and just didn't like it. So, you know, I thought, right, you know what, I'm going to have another go. And I looked at all the patterns that, that are out there and um, I even, I think actually in the end, it was, I got the, I got the, the basis of, of this pattern from the DK knitting book. Do you know that big thick one? With, it's got like a red 
coloured cover. A lot of people have, have got oh, it. Oh, yeah, I know that one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's good. Well, they just had an instruction to knit a mitered square in there and they joined it into four, you know, to make a little bigger, a bigger square, you know what I mean? So I thought, right, okay, I'll have a go. So here we, here we are. And, you know, a week later and I've got this much. Oh, look how cute it looks. Look. So I've got how many? Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty-one. So what I did in the end, I started over here. This that this was my first one over here. I cast on thirty-one. I'm using a two point five mil. I'm just using a pair of Carbon's DPNs, and the decrease that I'm using is a um, slip one. Knit two together and then pass that slip stitch over that's the double decrease that I'm doing so that was the first one that I knit there and I used the long tail cast on and then um, I did that one so I then long tail cast on 16 picked up 15 and then you know did the same thing and then when I got to this one I thought because you pick up first so I picked up 15 cast on 16 but I wasn't sure how to cast on those 16 to make it look as much as I could like that edge that you get on a long tail cast on you know that kind of twill sort of edge so I tried a couple and in the end I'm doing a backwards loop cast on and that seems to match quite well I'll hold it up close so you can see See this one here, I've got no nail polish on today I'm afraid. This one here, can you see with the long tail cast on and then that one there and all the subsequent ones are using a backward loop and can you see how it's very similar that kind of twill edge and that little detail kind of bugged me you know on the original one that I wasn't getting the same thing so that I thought yeah okay I'm happy with that. Then the other thing that bothered me was the way that it was picked up it just didn't look neat enough for me so what I decided to do is not slip I'm not slipping any stitches on the edges I'm just knitting you can see on that one there it's just straightforward garter edge there's no slip stitches up here and what I'm doing is I'm picking up the stitches the same way that you pick up the stitches on the log cabin blanket and for that you go in between the garter, it's a difficult square to show you because it's so dark, but you go in between those garter ridges, if you hold it that way, if you look in between them you'll see a little V's of your row below and you pick up that like first V. So it's exactly the same way as for the log cabin, so if you've done one of those you'll know what I mean. And then I really liked the neat edge, so I'll pick up 15, like if I'm doing on one on a corner, I'll pick up 15 and then one in the very corner of this other square here and then 15, oops, <laughs> it's all back to front, 15 along, oh, I can't work out which way to move my finger, 15 along there to get the 31 again. So that's how I'm doing mine. So I. You know, I think it's kind of a mishmash of, of various different patterns and methods and everything. Um, but I do like how neat, I'll just hold it up close so you can see, I like how neat those edges are, you know, when it's picked up. It's very clean looking and I like that. And I like how the line, the decreased lines do match really well. And I'm, I am weaving in my ends as I go along. But what I'm doing is I'm waiting until I've got two joining like here. I'll then knot them, tie them in a knot and then weave in. And you can see I've done that all along there. Sorry, you can hear dogs barking because the bin men are here. Do you know what it is? What? It's those Schultz's next door with their oh, little yappy dogs. That Denise moved in next door. It's never been the same again. <laughs> That's so funny. Do you know what? She's always sat on a veranda. It's not my dog. It's Denise's dog. She's always out there eating Kit Kats. Yes. All you hear is click. She's always knocking on the door saying, have you got any Jaffa cakes? And do you know what? The other day, she went down the drive in her pyjamas. She did. And I said, that mad woman's outside again in her pyjamas. She's not even got any gloves on. She's filming something. I don't know what. That's so funny. Oh. <laughs> 
So, I, I have, and I've even given it a Ravelry page. That's how, you know, I didn't for a while. I'm like, oh, you're not going to be a project. But, you know, I, I do find myself picking it up and doing a little square. Because look how tiny the squares are. That was the other thing. They're so tiny. They're like two inches square, I think. But that's, I really like that because you can do one in like half an hour and you feel like you've achieved something. And I do love work, <coughs> working with all the different yarns. I think it's, it's so, such fun. So I'm just going to, I'm working, that's, it's just such fun, I know, I'm like Miranda. <laughs> that's Miranda. So I'm working my way along with two rows. That's what I call knitting. No, no, that is knitting. It is knitting, mother. Um, so I'm working my way along until I, it's wide enough and then I'm just going to go row, 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 I think. Oh, my boat. <laughs> And some of the yarns I'm using, I've got, <laughs> oh God, I'm really like a mad woman today. What do you mean today? Yeah, I know. Everything. What's going on? Well, I've got my bag full. Look, look how stuffed full of... Yeah, you've got enough now. Well, I know, I, I kind of have. But I bought some from Juliana recently. Piglet. Oh, pink, yeah, Juliana Piglet, isn't yeah. she? On, that's really cute. From Juliana's Fibres. And these are not mini skeins. These are the mother of mini skeins. You know, they're 20 grams each. They're enormous. And I had to wind up, literally, the second I got them, I wound up this one because look, look, look at the colours. That colors. looks like a, po a, a packet of refreshers. Oh, my goodness. And can you see the sparkles? Can you see the sparkles? Oh, look at the... Oh, look That's the there. sugar. Look at the colours in that. It's much... It's actually brighter than that. There's like little pops of neon. You could throw that around. You're not throwing it around. You could play catch. Stop. It's throwing me yarn balls. So look, look at it there. Can you see that one here? Oh, it's so pretty. It's so, so pretty. And I crocheted a square as well with it straight away. And there's, I mean, look how much I've got. It's ridiculous. I said, at first I thought, gosh, I could actually need a pair of socks with two of these. But anyway, so I mean, oh, these are all my minis and they're my lovely minis from Marsha. Very little, thank you so much. So I'm working my way through those, Marsha. Have you seen their newly edited podcast? I did, and it's fabulous. We really enjoyed that. Yeah. That was cool. And how cool is it that Scylla is training... I know. She's, I mean... She's very clever. Whoa. Super cool. Very clever. Some very cool edits, I thought. The word. Some snap close-ups. Come in an expert. Yeah. I can't remember if I showed you these last time or not, but I've got some more minis from um, Nicole C. Mendez. I was just trying to think then, Nicole, is a shop, does it have a name, but it's it's just your lovely name. What does the C stand for? I don't know. What does the C stand for, Nicole? Nicole, we want to know. <gasps> Let's all guess. What's it going to be? Um, um, ooh, Christopher. Oh, stupid. I don't know. I Carl. Mean, Carl. Colette. Claire. I don't know. Um, so those are the lovely ones I got from Nicole. And I've used one already in there. So I've obviously got masses to go through. And these. Oh, I must show you these. I've got some um, Regia. And it's called My First Regia. I was just looking to see if I've got the card. And that I makes me think of that magazine that your mum sent you. Oh, did you speak about that the no, last episode? I don't think I did. My mum, God love her, she um, she found this magazine, and it's a it's one of these ones where you get a, a new part every week, and the first one was out, and it's always like ninety nine pence for the first one, and after that it's like five quid or something. But it was like the art of knitting, and she saw it, and she's like, "Oh, get that for Ake," and Ake, that's what everybody in our family calls me. Um, and you know she she sent it to me so she did and oh gosh it was for people who were learning to knit you know and very very she basic i might have spoke about this before i can't remember for her but if you're just learning to knit it was very good but it was like the first one was how to knit a garter, garter stitch square and i'm like oh i think i can do that <laughs> and there was like a couple of balls of wool on the front and it was it was acrylic and you know i'll use acrylic if it's nice acrylic but this was not nice acrylic oh lordy but anyway a heart is in the right place you know and 
But I found these and it's called My First Regia. And oh, it's so nice. Look, 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 look at And they're all these sort of candy, candy floss colours. And it's just a, t it's just a little ball. I think it's like 115 metres or something. But I just love the colours. They're so nice. And it's, a, it's 25, 75, 25 nylon merino. So I've used these ones as well and I love those. There's quite a lot. They're obviously not really minis, are they? To be fair. But, you know, I pretended they were minis. Have you finished, woman? I might have finished talking about that now. Because I think we're going to have to end the show. <laughs> we're going to call this one the blanket episode. So, Dan Jones. Yes? What else is on your needles? Oh. Uh, it continues. Um, and what I'm so pleased about is how... Because I've not knit on this for a while, so that you probably won't see much progress on there. Um, but... Because um, I've been really focusing on the cowl uh, but there is uh, the handbrake scarf um, which is great except having to pearl back I find slightly annoying um, hey ho um, but you know it's worth it and I think it will be worth it um, the, the thing I, ha I need to make sure is that this doesn't end up being another uh, honey cow to a twin skein cow. Yeah, I mean you're not. Sorry, I'm having a bit of a shawl dilemma. But I think I made more. Pro I've made more progress on that than I did in the same time on yeah. the honey cow. Yeah. Oh, this um, is my. Um, I know people will ask. This is my Canyon Lands. That my lovely friend Sally knit me for Christmas. It's beautiful. I thought it matched. Perfect. She's getting better, isn't she? <laughs> She's not a bad knitter, that Sally. No, not bad at all. And That's just revenge, it's... Sally, from you saying that I didn't knit those socks. <laughs> yeah. I so did. <laughs> you are so meanie. <laughs> I thought it matched really well with what I've got on. I didn't, which I didn't knit, obviously. <laughs> so, um... Yeah, that's that's that. I finished that. They they know about the yarn I oh, spoke last that's week. That, well, it is, I think. Cool. I'm continuing and pushing as hard as I can, and as soon as we get it done, the free pattern will be out. Kay Jones, what else is on your needles? Oh, my goodness. What's on my hook? Kay Jones, what else is on your hook? What's beeping? A fish. Uh, it's outside. It sounds oh, like a band. Okay. Vehicle reversing. Oh, I've left my needles out of my... Um... Oh, I do You could know. totally do that voice. You could be the new voice of, of vi vehicle, vehicle reversing. reversing. Um, Please right. move. The next thing is yet another blanket. I'm really sorry if you're bored with It's all the snow that we've been seeing on the pictures in... Uh, Probably is. Have you seen yeah. the snow? Oh, my God. Well, I, I, People have had, like, six feet. And, oh. I read a message uh, from what? Denise uh, this um, morning, and she was saying that they're due 15 inches this gosh, weekend. Wow. I'd love 15 inches of snow. But then it goes really quickly, I think, in Colorado, doesn't it? She said yeah. before. My fringe is doing a very weird thing today. Oh, God. Um, right. Next blanket <laughs> is my crochet blanket. And I can't remember. I think, did I have like 105 or something last time, I think? And I'm not, I think, oh, God, I don't know how many I've got. I think I've got 120-something now. Um, so here, I'll give it a little tour of where I'm up to right oh, oh I'll keep going I'll keep going <laughs> there's the end and I'll move it down so you can just have two a... more blankets yes shush there we go and I'm here and that's that's that same yarn from Juliana but crocheted isn't it lovely look at that and that's one of the Reggia ones here so pretty i love those two next to each other i do like i love bright colors you know but i do love soft muted colors you know I, the re, one of the reasons i really love watching danny from little bobbins is i just love the colors that she chooses i think they're beautiful you know just those soft muted tones just i think they're absolutely gorgeous so that's where i'm up to and i love that one as well gosh that one you see this one here see what i mean about the muted tones this one was from some that got gifted from diane up in lancashire isn't she litham yes are you in litham diane i think i've got that right she sent me some um, mini skeins so that's one of them i love that and that's another one of those 
think that's another one of those Reggio ones, I think. Yes, it is one of the Reggio ones. Um, so, yeah, so that's where I'm up to. And I've been thinking now on what size I want this, because you've got to, at some point, think, actually, you know, how big do I want it? And how far across is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. It's 13 across at the moment, and that's how wide it is. So I was thinking at first I thought I'd go to 20, but then I was thinking if I did that, I'd have to do kind of 20 by 30 to make it, you know, an oblong shape. And that's 600 squares. When I worked it out, I'm like, can't be 600. So clearly I, I think that's too big. <laughs> um, so I might now go to 15 across by like 20. That seems more reasonable, I think. Because that's a good size already, you know, it would cover two people on the sofa. So if I go to 15 and then 20 down and I'll see where I am when I get to that point. Um, and I just did one other last night. And this is another one from Juliana, actually. I did this one, which is like a knit. Look at that. God, it blows out completely the colour because it's so neon. Um, but it's like neon pink, neon orange. <laughs> It's really pretty, but you just can't really tell the colour. That's a little bit better, a little bit there. Um, so, so yeah, so still loving it, still crocheting my squares. I'm loving it, loving it. Yep. Still so let's show the next there. blanket then. Right, okay, let me just fold this little one up first. There we go. So that's that one. And then, I was working on Bryony's um, log cabin blanket. Gosh, I have to keep remembering all these names of these blankets. And I just have finished square 10. I think that square seemed to take me just forever. That's probably because I wasn't knitting on it. And it's an amazing thing. If you actually knit something, it gets finished. Did you know that? Mm. So I just finished square 10, so I've got two more to go. And I thought to give myself a break, from knitting squares I'll sew together what I've got so far and then that might you know encourage me to get it finished so I've sewn together the first nine squares and I think I'm probably going to have to stand up to show you this because it's I mean it's it's big let me find the top right here we go so look three oh 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 Six, <laughs> nine. So I've done the first nine squares. So I've just got three more to, well, two more to knit, and then just those three to sew. And I didn't, again, I didn't mind the seaming at all. And I know some people don't like the seaming, but I'll hold it close so you can see my seaming. I don't think it's bad. I did it the way that she said to do it. I'm covering the microphone. I hope that didn't. You can see there. I think it's it's pretty good actually. The only tricky thing that I found quite tricky is when you come to the junction where you've got you know the joining, it got a little bit messy, but it's not bad. So that's where I'm up to, and it's a lovely blanket. I mean it's it's a good size at nine by nine. It's, it's nine by nine. At three by three it's a good size, but I think just with those last three on it will mean that when Brian is on the, you know, the sofa, she likes to stretch her legs out and it'll totally cover her. But it's lovely, I think it's lovely. Yeah. And it's King Cole Bamboo Cotton. Could do an advert for them, couldn't I, the number of weeks I've been going on about this yarn. It's very heavy. I mean, feel the weight of that and it's not even finished yet. <laughs> so silly. He's so silly, isn't he? But it is it's heavy because of Ooh. the cotton and you know and bamboo. But it's lovely. It's drapey. You can see how drapey it is. And there's not an itch to be had with this yarn. It's Bryony approved. Cool. So, uh, Kay's asked me to pick up the mantle this week for um, what's on, what's off, and what's on your bookshelf. Um, so this gave me a really good opportunity actually because last episode I gave the impression I think to some people that um, we thought our only viewers uh, were in America now we know we? Yeah, well I clearly gave the impression oh uh, gosh yeah. I didn't know gosh we don't think that at all we, we, we absolutely don't um, and I, I just felt that I needed to uh, give a give a nod to the international 
um, viewers also. Um, so the first person uh, I'm going to pick is not in America. Mm. Um, and the first person I'm going to pick, um, she has a podcast that we found out about. I actually found out about this podcast because I went to uh, reply to her because uh, she'd left a comment on one of our videos uh, and for some reason it wouldn't let me reply. So I clicked on her name and she had a podcast. Um, for a while it had been in her native language, but then she'd started doing one in English. Um, and this person is, I hope I pronounced this right, <laughs> her name is Maya, M-A-J-A. -A. Gosh, Maya. I'd, yeah, would that be right? I don't know. <laughs> She's also, and um, probably more commonly uh, known as Margaret. Um, oh, yeah. And that is on uh, YouTube uh, and also on Instagram and also on Ravelry. Um, and Maya's been uh, a loyal watcher for a while. Uh, she's always sort of commenting. And uh, I WID'd I -end, uh, her a little while ago. And poor Maya didn't know what it was. So uh, that was another reason why I was messaging her too. So I could let her know what that was too. Um, so Maya... <laughs> Um, yeah, what are you knitting right now? Um, hey, that's a good one. Yeah. W I K N. W. No, it's not. What are you knitting now? What are. No, it's not. It's W A Y K N. Oh, that doesn't work. Can't have that. No. What does W I D N stand for then? What I'm doing now. Ah. Uh, what you're knitting now. W Y. Wicken. Wicken. <laughs> <laughs> Maya, please show us in the what's on your needles thread what's on your needles that would be marvellous and enough of your waffling about blankets I want to know what's going on at Sillern and Fort we found lots of extremely interesting things could have done with one of those blankets that day it was chilly but not as chilly as Piercebridge um, no, so true. without further ado Let's go back to me and Bryony stood in the middle of Chester's. Welcome back to Favourite Places to Knit Part 2. It's time for us to show you around Salernum Fort, isn't it, Bryony? I think we should start down at the Roman bathhouse. Roman bathhouses still in existence today in exactly the same way that they worked back in the days of the Romans. A seriously important part of Roman life, getting clean. Uh, they were obsessed with being shaved and obsessed with being clean. Um, and there's Mrs Jones, who's also obsessed with being clean. <laughs> So here, look at this. This is where you put your clothes. So you come into the bathhouse, take your toga off, fold it up, stick it down there. This is floor level. And then as we walk across, we start to enter the different sections of the bathhouse. So we've left all our clothes behind, through we come. And you can see, look at that. That's, I mean, that'll be worn actually down through visitors, but I mean, look at the step. That is a carved step. That's so impressive. So through we come, and we get into a lobby, and at the lobby we can take uh, different directions. We can either choose to go into a hot room so we can get up a serious sweat, or we can choose to go into some of the warm rooms which are over here, so not quite so hot. Let's have a look in a couple of the hot rooms. So up the steps, in we go. Oh. Look at this. Look, Brian is boiling. That's amazing, yeah. <laughs> Good acting, Brian. Through we come. <laughs> Check the floor out in here. Amazing. So you'd come in here, you'd sit down, just like a sauna, really, really hot, um, and then you would move off through and start to cool down a little bit. So you come back out here, look. And the door, when the door shut, that's the mark it would have made over time. Look, there's how it locked into place when the door was shut on the hot room. Here we come. Careful on these steps down here. Yeah. 
Here we go. This is what I wanted to show you. Bath time. So I come round and sit down on the edge. Be nice deep water. Getting all clean. It's absolutely amazing. I wonder how many guys you could have got in here, how many sweaty legionaries you could have got in here. How many do you think, Bryony? Mm -hmm. Quite a few. How many sweaty legionaries do you think you could get in here? I'm just having that thought. <laughs> um, gosh, I don't know. Oh. What, what, sat around there oh, with Bryony? Yeah, yeah. Oh, 20, I guess. Yeah, mm -hmm. quite a few. You've got hot, you now need to get cold. All about closing those pores. Back here, we've got a cold bath. So in there, you would have physically got into a freezing cold bath. Um, and this room as well was also the cold room. So if you didn't want to go into the cold bath, you could just sit in the cold room. But I don't know about you, after I've had a bath and I've had a wash, I often need to pop to the gentleman's room. And around here we find it. Look, it's the latrine. So, how did the latrine work? Obviously would have been walled off. We'd come down the steps here, come into the latrine. There'd have been a wood um, platform over the top with holes cut in. I would turn around, sit down, do my business, and then I would use my stick with a sponge on the end to clean myself up. Uh, there would then have been um, some water in the middle to clean your stick off with, and then you would leave your stick in your sponge on your way out. Beautiful. So I've done my business, how do we get rid of it? Have a look, there's a slope. And it slopes all the way around, all the way down. And the course of the river has actually changed now and that would have run straight down into the river and then straight off down the river. So, we've walked along Hadrian's Wall and we've got to Chester's Fort. Now Chester's Fort was known as Salernum in Roman times and this is the East Gate. Now the East Gate is the most well preserved of all the gates uh, at Salernum Fort uh, and what's really exciting is we found something really cool over here. Kay's got it for us. Watch your step as you come over here. This would have been the step which the gate closed against. You can even see up there how it used to operate and slide and move around. What have you found, Kay? Sorry, I was just stashing Bryony's teddies. Stash away. Um, this would have been the archway? That's exactly right. Yeah. So there's two archways, and that's the start of it there. So it comes over the top here, comes down to the middle, and we've got one gate here, and then we've got exactly the same over the other side. And then you've obviously got two fortified. You can see in here now, and again, if you remember, these would have been evident as well at the fort we visited in the last episode. And we actually saw the footprint um, last week as well, uh, last episode, sorry, um, of, uh, of the gate there. Um, and you can see much more now on how serious a structure this was. Um, so you would have had uh, legionaries stationed in here who would have been watching people. There's the line of Hadrian's Wall. So Hadrian's Wall is running in here and then it's running on up across the fort and then out across uh, mm. to the west. Here we have an auxiliary barrack block. Now this would have been seen at the fort that we visit, visited last episode as well, but unfortunately all of that was all underneath um, the village uh, that is now there. But here it's been excavated um, and this is actually the finest example of auxiliary barrack blocks not just in the UK but in the whole of the world um, and it's actually pretty amazing to walk through because you get a real sense of the barrack blocks that we see here which we've had four to six guys um, sleeping in in bunk beds uh, and then also all the auxiliary rooms as well that you see around there's lots of small little spaces um, roads that I'm well it's not a road it's a walkway here this would have been an open air walkway with barracks either side um, you really do get a feel for how this would have been a bustling smelly um, but really well used space seriously cool
So we've come through the East Gate. The East Gate has led us directly up on the line of Hadrian's Wall that we walked across from Wall's End in the East. We're now on the Via Principalis. Via Principalis evident in every fort that was ever built. Now Via Principalis, main road in the fort, most important road in the fort because it brings you straight in um, and straight up to uh, the Commandant's house on the left who was the guy in charge of everything here. Uh, and then next to that you had the Praetorium. Uh, the Praetorium was in effect a basilica um, and that is where everything went on. So let's walk in the footsteps of, of I mean, th this fort was uh, built in around 120 AD um, and then it was at its heyday from about 170 to 250 AD. Um, so in all that time, thousands of people will have walked exactly in these footsteps, um, either coming up to carry on their journey straight across uh, Hadrian's Wall, uh, which obviously from here is going to travel uh, another 80, 90 miles right the way across the country, um, or they're going to come and they're going to come to the Praetorium here, which can see is an unbelievably impressive building. Uh, this was built to uh, signify the power of Rome. Um, so you had the, the uh, pillars and uh, domes and, um, and an open air bit in the middle. Uh, it's absolutely stunning building. And here it's superb. You can still see an awful lot of what's in there. So let's go take a look. So I'm the commandant. I've left my house, which is literally just there. And it's time for me to go to work. So I walk about five steps and I'm over into the main governing block of the whole of the surrounding area. This is where everything happened. Um, so if you were a, a tribesman, you wanted to come and talk to the Romans about getting anything, you would come here and you can see how stunning this would have been. Those uh, things that we can see there, those would have been colonnades. Um, so they would have been really high up. There would have been a great big arch. There would have been an open air bit in the middle. Um, this would have looked absolutely superb. And then as we come across, what we see here is we see the five most important rooms. Um, these were where um, all, there was a shrine here. Um, and there was all sorts of things going on in these rooms. Side, side, but the bit I'm excited about is this bit here. Case found something really cool. It's the only surviving one, I'm told. Um, let's put it in and have a little look. You can see how serious a structure this is as well. Can you? To think that this was built in 120 AD. What have you got? Um, this was the safe, or the vault, I would call it a safe, being a banker, where they kept all the money to pay all the soldiers. Have a good look in there if you want. Come in a bit. Don't fall. Gosh, don't fall. We don't want you falling in the vault. Hope you've enjoyed our look around Salernum Fort. Now, we're just sort of tempting you with little bits of Hadrian's Wall as we move further and further across. Here you don't see very much of it, but next time, next time you're gonna see lots of it. Next time we're at, definitely, it is one of your favorite places, isn't it? Because you've knit there before. I can't see where we're going. Wall Town Crags. Right, yes. Come on. Some of you may have seen the picture of Kay sat on the wall knitting as Bryony appeared. Is she there? <laughs> <laughs> We're not whiffy, you're the whiffy one. And back to us. Um, so yeah, next time is Wall Town Crags where you're gonna see serious bits of the wall. As I've said already today, the wall was here, it's just all gone now, uh, and all that's left is this fort. But I think you've got a better idea of what Roman forts were like. I better go, the barbarians are attacking us. Back to us in the studio. <laughs> that's so exciting so exciting i think i'm gonna need an episode's rest before we do it oh right yes we'll see we'll see we'll see but to, to be truthful um 
we're slightly concerned that we have a spell of dodgy weather coming in. Um, so rather than um, get all excited about Walltown yeah. Crags, which is just the, it is an amazing place to yeah. meet. I mean, it's a. I love. It's my favourite bit of the wall. I think. If you want to sit somewhere amazing and knit, yeah. go go knit on Walltown Wall Crags. Walltown Crags. It's a little bit of a walk. Yeah. But once you're up there, the I mean, the views. People talk about panoramic views. Yeah. It, it's it's untrue. It, it is amazing. And there's a huge. It's a huge long stretch of the wall, isn't it? Yeah, um, it's the longest stretch. Yeah. Um, and it's just, I I think because you have to work a bit to get to it, you also feel. Uh, it just feels a lot more untouched. Um, although my mum, Nana Wendy, um, read a thing in the paper to say that amateur archaeologists, except they're not archaeologists at all, they're thieves, uh, are going up to sections of the wall and pinching the wall, pinching stuff. No, that is shocking. That is shocking. I mean, it's. I I couldn't be more angry no. and annoyed about things like that. The lack of respect mm. to um, who we all are, because uh, the I mean the Romans changed it's, the face. It's all of our history, yeah. isn't it? It, it? it would be just the same to go to Greece and start yeah. chipping off bits of ancient Greece yeah. and then wandering off with it. It's disgraceful. It is disgraceful. So when we go to do our holiday special um, at uh, Housesteads Fort, which we spoke about last episode, I think that me and Bryony should definitely get dressed up with the woad uh, and go out looking for these naughty people uh, and get them with our Nerf guns. <laughs> well, there's only one way that we can better the excitement that was uh, Chester's Fort, and I did enjoy that trip out, actually. It was lovely. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, it's not too place. far away, really, is it? No. It's like an hour and 15 minutes, maybe. Yeah, you just don't use the A1. A1 north from here is just horrible. My, my, yeah. as, as much as you can't knit on that other road, no, it's much better to go on that route. I can knit in the car as long as we're on um, a motorway or a dual carriageway type road, you know, that's just fed, that's straight. Um, but we came back on like A roads, weren't they? And the very, It's the way I normally go. Um, yeah, but I can't knit then because it just makes me... Yeah, but at least you don't hit I mean, horrible traffic no, all the time. that's true. Yeah. I have nothing. So uh, You have nothing. I have nothing. Nothing. Have, nothing. Have we said? Don't want to Have we said that? No, no, not yet. Ah, right. I can't. I, I couldn't remember whether you'd said the words. Okay. I'm about to say Kay Jones because I have nothing. What's off your needles? I do have something which is nothing short of miraculous. Oh, now, some people are organised, and then there's my wife. What are you saying? I'm not. Quite the opposite. I'm not organised. No, I'm saying you're extremely organised. Oh, I thought you were saying I was the opposite of organised. This is the lady who puts out Brownie's pyjamas for after her <laughs> bath, <laughs> before I'm up. <laughs> I do do that. So I come downstairs... <laughs> And you walk by uh, Bryony's Bryony's bathroom, um, and there on the floor is her pajamas, <laughs> ready for the bath that will happen some twelve hours later. Well, it's going to happen that day. That's called it saves me having to go upstairs. That's to... called productivity. Well, that's called living on three floors. Living on three floors. That's what it's called. It's because then I think, oh, I don't have to go upstairs and get her pajamas. This is the lady is who has finished her Christmas Eve socks. In February. Okay. So, come Christmas Eve. Oh, right. I get it now. Yeah. Okay. You'd be able to go Christmas I know, I know. I'm going to knit some socks. Oh, I have. <laughs> <laughs> well, some may believe you. Everyone believes me. Ta-da! Finished. They don't look very Christmassy. They don't look very Christmassy. Oh, they've got trees on. They've got Christmas trees on. I've seen them. And the colourway, to me, look, it's like um, they could frosty. Be go, they could be go faster arrows. It's like frosty snow, isn't it? And yes. With bits of mud still showing through the snow. Yeah. So they I look a bit like the the, the Eddie colourway. Oh, it does a little yeah. bit, doesn't it? Yeah, the, the No Makers, it does look a bit like that. The Eddie and we Christmas. totally got which film she was basing I it on. I wonder, I don't think she watches, um, but... We, we watched recently... National Lampoon's Vacation. The Vacation one. And when he meets his cousin, who isn't called Griswold, actually. No. He can't because it's not his cousin. No. It's his wife's cousin, Correct. isn't it? Yes. 
when he meets him, he's got on this outfit, should we say? That's brilliant. And it's like, is it? I it's all the colours from it's that colourway. It's all colorway. the colours on the colourway from Eddie Griswold. And I wonder if it, it's from that suit rather than the one he had on. From the Christmas one. Yeah. We'd love Christmas to know. One. So Amanda, if you watch, I don't think she watches for a second because she's a very busy lady. Um, but yeah, I would love to know which of those two films was, you know, your inspiration for the Eddie Griswold. So yes, finished. Two socks finished. Oh my gosh, I don't know why I struggled with these socks so much. I don't think I was massively in love with the yarn. I think I said that before. You know, I'm happy with it now. They're washed. And I think, you know, it's, it kind of evens everything out, doesn't it, giving them a wash? And they will go to Nana Wendy. Yes. Oh, um, exciting. So I'll get those sent off to her this next week. With the, with the book. Yeah, we did a Christmas yeah. album from our uh, trip. Um, because Nana Wendy used to have, or she does have, an extremely good camera. And she takes thousands of pictures. But unfortunately, uh, she doesn't really know how to access them. No. So there's like millions of pictures on that. That have now, according to Grandpa Steve, been lost because uh, that computer has a problem with his hard drive. Oh, but right. I think he's talking pig's will. Right. Um, and he just knows that it will take a bit of effort to get them oh, off. Oh, right. So he doesn't um, want to do it. No. Right. No. I don't blame him for that. They're a beautiful finished so, project. done. Done. Well done. done. That is all the what's off your needles. That is it. it all that it just remains for me to ask someone what's off their needles. Huh? I'm, and picking up on the international theme, I may need help with the pronunciation of this name. Um, I should have totally, when I was in charge of what's on and what's off, I'm so glad you gave me this opportunity, because I should totally have, um, have mentioned her before, because she's a musician, and a really good musician. Um, and she plays Roland products. There's nothing written on there. There is, I'm going to show you in a second. Okay. Um, but what we established on Instagram a little while ago uh, that I knew she was a, a pianist uh, and a musician, but I didn't realise that she had a real affinity to Roland. Roland's a big part of my day job. Uh, they make electronic um, instruments and things. Um, and uh, she also has a podcast, yeah. which I didn't even know. I'm really sorry I didn't know. And I only found out when I went to get the spelling of your um, your Ravelry and your Instagram name. At least I think it's your Instagram name. It's definitely your Ravelry name. And it's definitely your name on your podcast. Uh, and it's that. Do you see that there? Oh, my goodness. I'll just try um, it. Right. Okay, are you ready? So, are you ready? Are you ready? Esther Magdalene. <laughs> Did I do that right? The J will be silent. The S will be silent. Jermagdalene. <laughs> Joe May Oh, is that another J? I thought that was an L. That's a J there. Yeah. Gosh. We're shocking. Yeah. At that's, pronunciations. That's pretty tricky. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but please, what's off your needles? And in the process, maybe you could phonetically. Yeah. Tell it. <laughs> tell us how to <laughs> say. How to say it. Yeah, that would be cool. Uh, but super cool Instagram feed. She's always posting cool pictures. Um, great musician and has a podcast too. Wow. Um, so yeah, what is off your needles? And she's in Finland or no Sweden? Oh, Sweden, cool. Sweden, I think. Yes. Where was Maya? Is she in Serbia? If I got that Maya right. Maya is in Serbia. Serbia. Yeah. Yes. So uh, Maya is in Serbia. Um, and Esther Magdalene. <laughs> <laughs> She'll be laughing her head off because I'm well, sure hopefully not that's really not offended because right. I really don't mean to <laughs> offend. I'm so sorry. Um, but yeah, you are in Sweden, um, and it's time for what's on your bookshelf. Oh. Ooh, who should start? Shall I? I've got to the end of a row, so shall you I? You should go? start. Okie doke. Um, Ready, steady, go. <laughs> I shall I do the finished one first, or the one okay. I'm reading? It's an FO. It's an FO finished. FB. It's FB. An FB. FB. That's Facebook, isn't it? Oh. Finished book. Dan got me this little book for Christmas, just as a stocking oh, yes. filler, didn't you? This gives us a chance to... And um, I read it really quickly. But it's only little. It's only little. And it's this one. Who was Betty? And you know we've spoken about Betty's tea rooms several times before, um, and no one really knows who Betty is or was. And this little book was put together by 
by you know the people that run Vetties, and basically they, they Jonathan got Jonathan Wild, isn't it? Yes, Who? Jonathan Wild. It's the the family. It's the Wild family, and he can you see all the names of these authors? I mean, you'll probably recognise lots and lots. We've spoken of them. about Philippa Gregory. Yeah, including the Prince of Wales, no less. Alan Titchmarsh, Barbara G- Taylor Bradford. Gervais Finn. If people very, haven't read Gervais yeah. Finn's books, they're really good. Some very big names. And what they've done is they've asked all these authors to just make up a little work of fiction as to who they think Betty was. So it's lots and lots of little stories as to, you know, who who Betty could possibly be. It's very fun. And they've all got lovely little pictures, look, to go with the story. And, you know, I was reading a few a night because they're very short. You know, that's Gervais Finn. He's a very funny writer. And it's, it's a really good, lovely little book. Very easy read. Like Jilly Cooper's, it's just a poem. A little poem. But I love the, the illustrations. They're really lovely. Philippa Gregory, look. I mean, it, it, just for, for anyone who is maybe looking at this cold and isn't aware of Betty's it's an institution in it really is, the yeah. UK um, well, if you're looking I think again people even down in London might not know right about Betty's but it's a very Yorkshire company the, the facts are simple I think, they, I think might, they might have a shop in London now I've said that I think the, somebody said recently the facts are super simple there is no other tea room of the same quality no in the UK this is as good as it gets when yeah, it comes to tea, tea rooms. rooms. It's very, it's very um, old. I don't want to say old-fashioned because that's not the right word. Very vintage, I suppose. Maybe, you know, they all, all the waitresses wear black, proper silver, silver, black and white. They have like um, white lace collared blouses, black skirts, little aprons, silver service. So all your you know your tea comes to you in a silver teapot and serviettes, and you know it's it's very traditional very you know british traditional and the cakes are fantastic yes you know it's as good it is as good as it gets yeah it really is as good as it gets so if you're so, looking for quality tea yeah in yorkshire the, i mean they do have an online shop yeah i've you i'm know, sure they'll have, send abroad they probably will send abroad not the perishable stuff obviously um, but they do lots of things like jams and chutneys and we had their fruit cake at christmas that is extremely fabulous. nice it was fantastic. It's the best. I'm not a lover of Christmas cake, Me you know, heavy dark fruit cakes, but this was fantastic. Um, and their online shop also sells other things, tea towels and mugs, and you know, I've got a couple of the fat rascal mugs. You will have seen them before. So, I mean, if you're ever in Betty's and you've got a spare little bit of money, I don't know how much that was, obviously, because it was a gift. It doesn't say. I don't think it would have been very expensive, was it? Well, no, we're not discussing price. Oh, I'm just saying. It's a really Really cute little read. I loved it. So cool. And then just it, it, well no because then it, it it's a back and forth with the oh, books woman. Okay. Uh, also as well we, we should just pick up on uh, we're talking about tea rooms because uh, Tilly Trout was oh, asking yeah. about tea rooms. Oh she was. She was recommending some tea rooms. Um, Denise local was to asking her. as well. Denise mentioned yeah. something on the podcast I think. Um, so as far as tea rooms go in Yorkshire, th- th- we don't go anywhere else. No, we there's there's one in they're in York, North Allerton, Harrogate, Thirsk, and Ooh. Ilkley. Yes, that's and right, Ilkley's isn't a cool it? one. Yeah, Ilkley's a really nice one. My favourite, I think, is probably probably the downstairs of Harrogate. They have a an upstairs and a downstairs in the tea rooms. The upstairs is on um, you know ground level, so they're very light and airy and lovely. But if you go downstairs, it's never as busy because people generally don't want to go downstairs. But it's beautiful. It's all wood panelled, and they're all like carved and everything, aren't they? Yeah. Like um, inlaid wood panels, and it's just lovely. We always like to go downstairs. Yeah. So if you ever ever go to Betty's and you think oh it looks busy, just ask them. Just say. You know, can we go downstairs? And we usually get in. But don't go there expecting good coffee. Uh, they're not renowned. Because well, they're, no. they're not really renowned for their coffee. So if you're looking for coffee, Tea, yeah. if you're looking for coffee, there's two places that I would recommend. Uh, one is in uh, Richmond. 
Oh, yeah. Uh, and it's called Mocker. Mocker. If you're in Richmond in North York. If you're in North Yorkshire, Yorkshire yeah. uh, and you're in Richmond going to Mocker, the lovely coffee couple. there. Lovely couple. Really, really nice. lovely couple. Say that, that we it. sent you. So, yeah, they know us. Because we haven't been in for a year because no, I've been ill. No. And she, she says to Kay, how are you then, Kay? She remembered my name. I mean, this I was just absolutely blown away. You yeah. don't get that these days, do you? You know, and we were chatting away and she went, oh, you know, I think we were getting some sweets because they sell sweets and handmade chocolates. And she says, oh, how much of that do you want, Kay? And I was like, oh my God, I said to you after, she remembered my name. That, I think, is phenomenal. Sweets is a case in point. Very good sweets. Excellent sweets. Excellent sweets. Sweets in jars. And, and not sort. rubbish either. Yeah. Sometimes um, they fill them with rubbish. Yeah. And the chocolates Chocolates are, are fantastic. Handmade. They make a lot of them there, but then some of them is another local person that yeah. makes them. And they're just... I mean, you had... I didn't have them last time, but you had them and they were fantastic. I can't form the words. <laughs> they're they're that, really, they're really that good. good. So if you're in Richmond... Sweets. It's in the square, opposite the co-op. Don't go to Costa. No. For burnt roast. No. There isn't a Starbucks. You couldn't go there anyway. Don't no. go to that pub that we went to that no. the day after I got ill. Yeah. Uh, go to Mocha. It's and fun. Yeah, the coffee is amazing. The the other exceptional place for coffee, if you're in Yorkshire, again, unfortunately, um, not unfortunately because Yorkshire's lovely. It's just where we but are, isn't it? Springs Espresso in York um, is out of this world. Uh, and I think it's time. I've never been. So no, have to take me. Definitely, it's not the biggest place. I'm... Well, I'm not fitting it. Is no. that what you're implying? That's not what I was implying. <laughs> Ask me about my books, woman. What's on your bookshelf, <laughs> Mr. Jones? Yeah, it's really funny. We were watching the podcast back last episode, and it was, we got to what's on your bookshelf, and the, and the, the the sound effects came in, and you went, "What was that?" Because it, it, it goes, uh, the, the, there's like people talking and then it goes, shh. <laughs> I see there's people talking in a library and then being shushed. <laughs> What's on my bookshelf? Well, um, I finished Shackleton and I spoke about that I think a couple of times. Um, it's a great book, give it a read. If you don't know the story, even if you do know the story, uh, this is a fairly new book I think because it was hardback. Mm. Um, and he's a brilliant writer, a really brilliant writer, um, which unfortunately I can't say the same for this book, which I'm now reading. Along the same lines, I mean, the, the, the guy is a legend, of yeah. course, uh, Ranulph Fiennes, um, but the writing isn't great. You have to work hard to understand what he's going on about. He uses lots of words, actually lots of words from places like Finland and Sweden oh, and right. Norway, yeah. um, which if you're not from that part of the world, it's difficult to know how to pronounce it, as I've already shown you this episode, um, and it, it, your brain just starts to gloss over a bit. He's also introduced a whole load of characters really quickly, because he's gone on an expedition, um, and I can't really work out who's who, and I've also not bonded with it, with any of them, so y y you're not yeah, feeling... No. I don't really know who they are, so I, I don't really care about them at the moment. It's interesting, and I'm sure it's going to get really, really good as I, I go further through, but he perhaps could have done with a ghost writer, I think. We said, yeah, I said that to you, didn't yeah. I? He could have got someone else to write it. But if you've read books uh, about explorers, um, so if you've read about Scott or Shackleton or Amundsen uh, or any of the other great explorers, it, I'm not aware of any other books quite so recent as this one uh, and also with a guy that's still out there and, mm, and doing it today mm. um, so definitely worth a go uh, I'm probably a chapter or so in I'm I'm enjoying reading it it's just hard work what's on your bookshelf well I mentioned the only other thing that I'm reading and I'm still reading at the minute I mentioned this last time but I didn't really talk about it is I'm reading the second one of the um Clan of the Cave Bear books, The Valley of Horses, um, that far in. nearly finished it actually. And I, I think I said last time that this one is my favourite out of the series. There's actually six books, I think I said seven before, but there's six. And I think I like this one the most because it's mainly, the bulk of it is just Ayla by herself in this valley and she lives there for a couple of years before John Dula comes into her life. 
and it's just about her daily life and how she goes about living and and everything and that you know the struggles that she has being by herself and then she gets some I, I say pets in the loosest sense because I don't think she class them as pets but there's a horse and a cave lion that she befriends and it's just basically about that and then John Duller comes into her life and is injured and she has to help him and everything and she's never seen another human like her and uh, you know there's only so there's only her and John Duller really and it goes backwards and forwards between John Duller's story and hers um, as to how he gets there so it's kind of to in and fro him but the the reason I mean and I like there's another the Mammoth Hunters is the next one and I really like that one. Then after that, there's a lot more characters come into it. And the thing I struggle with is they've all got very odd names because they're all, you know, from these clans and, you know, tribes or whatever you want to call them from way back. And all the names are very peculiar. And I kind of struggle to remember who's who. It's not like you've got a George and a Fred and, a you know, names that you're Similar familiar to this. with. Yeah. And Cold as it got towards the end, when she got back to where he lives, there was like masses of people, and I'm like, I've no idea who all these people are. You know, which one's his mum and which one's his, and what's going on. So I kind of lost the plot a little bit towards the end ones, but I absolutely loved the earlier ones. So yeah, enjoying that again. This must be the fourth time I've read it. Must be a good book. Yeah, very good. That's me. That's me. Oh my goodness, where'd you get that from? Ask me and I'll tell you. What's on your bookshelf? Well. I don't even recognise that book. Have you had it for ages? Yes, ish. Oh, okay. This is a this is a great book. A tremendously brilliant book that I read lightning quick and was super interested right the way throughout. And it is, of course, all about... Move it the other way. <laughs> All about the wall, Rome's greatest frontier. So it's particularly opportune for what we're doing at the moment. It might be slightly tricky to find. I'm sure if you go on Amazon, you will be able to spot it. Um, it is all about not just the wall at Roman times, but it also carries on. So it talks about its history right the way up to pretty much present day. And that is a story in itself because the borders of this country uh, with Scotland have been an interesting place for quite some time. When you consider um, th the long running history um, through the years of the English trying to conquer Scotland um, and uh, even when they had, you then had um, what, what they called border reavers uh, who used to travel around um, coming normally from Scotland side but I think they also ran the other way as well so English guys raiding over and basically robbing farms and that's why when you travel through Northumberland and also the upper part of Cumbria bordering into Scotland a lot of the farms as we've seen are fortified mm. so that they could defend themselves when the border reavers came to attack that's sort of 1300s through to 1700s I think um, so this is a tremendous book if you're enjoying our journeys um, in Rome, or, or not in Rome. Oh, I bet Talia would like that. Our Roman journeys, yeah, Talia. You'd definitely like this. But anyone who's enjoying these Roman out and abouts, um, give this a go, it's tremendous. And I'm going to sneak in another quick one, because I'll have shown <laughs> some of this in the clips at the start. Um, Kate got me for this. Kate got me for this. Kate got, got me for this. this for Christmas. Not Christmas just gone, but the mm. Christmas before. You're going to freak out when you see this book. You've already seen some of the pages. This is Star Wars, a pop-up guide to the galaxy. I can see Garrett now. I can see Matthew him combusting. Right. Also, Matt might be excited. Uh, yeah. um, and if you open this up... It's amazing. It is amazing. Look. It's basically, it's paper craft yeah. right the way through. And the, the, the designs are about as accurate as you could get. But not only that, the, the, there's a lot of writing, a lot of writing. It's interesting writing too. You know, you know how much I love Star Wars. I've learned a lot from this. But look, as you open it up, There's the Death Star <laughs> exploding. Well, no, that's the laser, should I say. And it's blowing up Alderaan. Um, it is an, um, over and, the other side. And I side. got it off Amazon if you're wanting to look for it. And it's by, we'll tell you who it's by. And uh, here we have, uh, we've got Endor up there. I'll move. Can you see there is a speeder bike uh, and it's rider. 
um, and it goes right the way through. Um, so, so there's loads of stuff, and I have shown loads of these pages uh, at the start of so hopefully you've seen, but look at this. Look at this. Can this you is see like it glowing? Look, they, they actually have got little lights inside. <laughs> All you need is the sound effects and you're away. It's absolutely rocking. Um, so this, if you are a Star Wars fan, um, is an extremely cool book to own. And it's by... It's Matthew Reinhardt. Yeah. It's the Star Wars A Pop-Up Guide to the Galaxy. Uh, and this stays um, under my desk. Uh, and I use it regularly. Uh, if I want a little Do you? cheery moment, all right. Just have a little, uh, little read. <laughs> We're just gonna have a break and yes, play have with a break. my pop-up book. Have a break. I'll have a Kit Kat. <laughs> Pull up a chair. Yeah. With your favourite drink. Pop on knitting den. Poor Dinny. She really had a cold. <laughs> she kept doing that, and she's like, "Oh, I'm so sorry for this sniffing. I'm so, I'm not laughing at you, Denise. It was just." We're you laughing made, with you. Yeah, you just make like me we giggle. Always do. Yeah, you're like, we're like, oh, poor Denise. Now, I'm very excited about this. What's on your bookshelf? I'm about to ask someone what's on oh, my bookshelf. Oh, I thought there was something else. No. Sorry. No, no, no. Here we go. I'm, I'm about to ask an archaeologist. Oh, my goodness. What's on their bookshelf? <gasps> now, how exciting is this going to be? We need to get over to the thread because it's going to be interesting. Talk about put the pressure yeah, on I this know. poor lady. <laughs> This probably, again, we're picking up on the international nature of our viewers, uh, and we uh, pay homage to all of you international Thank viewers, because they're all over the place, which is amazing. It's been the, one of the coolest things about this whole podcast mm -hmm. journey, mm -hmm. um, has been just the, the, there are no barriers to the knitting okay. world. Um, so who is it? It's... Now, do I say that <laughs> as I expect to say it? It's... Do you want me to say it? You'd say it sort of Frenchish, wouldn't you? Brigitte? Yes. <laughs> What's Brigitte. on your needles? Shh. Brigitte. You are B17. B17? You, you live in That's Montreal cool, in Canada. Cool Ravelry name. Yeah, I know. Maybe she's into bombers. I was going to say, isn't that a yeah. bomber? B17 yeah, it is, yeah. bomber. Yeah. Um, so, Brigitte, you're an archaeologist. Um, and I want to know what's on your needles. Um, she's super cool. She put a comment, I think, in one of our, um, I think it was last episode. Um, she's really enjoying the out and abouts. Um, and I really appreciate that come from an archaeologist because I'm not an archaeologist. I do my best. Um, so I love archaeology. Actually, when time. I was at school, I, that's, I really loved archaeology and geography. They were my two kind of, you know, favourite things. But, I, 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 you know, I wish I'd been encouraged Actually, when I was younger, things have changed these days, haven't they? But I don't think it would have been seen as a career. No, no. Back then. So, yeah, Brigitte, please come and tell us what is on your bookshelf. So, uh, so it's the Andy Bits. Andy Bits. Uh, spring into socks competition. Competition? It's no. Not a competition? Of course it's not, because there are no winners. We're all winners. Well, there will be a winner. But yeah. That's not, it's not like in Brian a comp sports day. Not in a competition. There's form. no competition. Don't start me on that. Because of course we can't have losers. Because no. that's just not fair. Does anyone else? I don't know what it's like in America. I'd be interested to know actually how what schools are like in America. But in this country, generally, when you have things like sports days. It's changing now. Do you think it's changing? It is changing. Ten years ago, when I was working full-time in education in the classroom, it pretty much everywhere just wasn't competitive. Right. Whereas you think now... it's going the other way? It is going but the other way. In the last five, six we years... We can only hope. It, well, the problem is it comes down to the leadership. Of each school. So yes. every school is probably different. Yes. So, but in Bryony's school, there really is not any competitive... And you, 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 the you kids know. don't like it. I, I, I see them on the sports day and the year sixes, you yeah, hear them saying, bored. there's no point they're us really trying. Bored. Because, you know, no one knows where we are. They all do it in teams. Yeah. No one does it against each other. They no. just do it themselves. It's against they, the clock and they don't know what time they have to beat. No, they just score a certain number of points and we've no idea how the point system works. Because it's massive. You know, somebody will have 3,900 and something, somebody... 
no idea how these point systems work. So you, and like Dan said, there's no competitive edge. They're not competing against yeah. each other when they're racing. You follow your child around each thing and they do it. No <sighs> idea know, where we, they're at. And then at the end, really. they say. And they say, the reason why we do this is so everybody's a winner. Um, and and no is, one loses. But the thing is... Life isn't like that, sadly. And, th- you know, I, I think a bit of com- competition doesn't do anybody any harm. No. You know, obviously, in everybody, moderation. yeah, everybody tries their best all but the time. But the problem is with this whole situation is Bryony's now in year four. She's never won. No. Her 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 house always come last. So instead of in a normal sports day, you're going to win some races. You're going to lose some races. Yeah. Whereas at this sports day, as a team, you all lose. Yeah. So more kids lose. It doesn't work. No. we it, Yeah. We feel quite strongly about it. But there's nothing you can do. It's... Well, you, you raise... The problem we seem to have at the moment is you raise your voice. And, and you see... You as... are vilified. Yeah. No one dares. Nobody dare give an opinion. I think that's the thing, and you we know, can probably blame politicians for that. Probably can, yeah. But that's a whole other yeah. story. We're um, into politics, gosh, I don't know. Spring into socks, yes, with Nick's knits, yes. Starts first of March. So that is like We've a week got, and a bit. It's not long, is it? Because no. we're a short month. We've got a chatter thread going that's very chatty, which is great, and people have started showing yarns that they're going to use, which is exciting. I've changed my mind. What am I knitting? Well, you're. Um, this was funny actually because I bought some yarn for Dan, and I put a picture on Instagram, and I think it was Marsha said, "You're a genius. You found a way of buying yarn when you're actually on a yarn diet because I bought it for Dan." And I'm not on a yarn diet. <laughs> I didn't. I honestly didn't think about. And that I totally. I, I said it. last episode I wanted something lovely to knit with, and if you remember the the, the two colours of the things, that's the the grey and grey. Yeah, yeah, it's like two different shades of grey. Now remember, this is because I'm trying to do Not this 50 to. Fifty shades. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Somewhat dreadful book, yeah. dreadful film. It's going to be, I'm sure. Well, I've seen some reviews. It's out, and the uh, reviews. I told you one of the reviews, and I can't repeat it because they use bad words. I'm not going near it. No. Um. So, I, he wanted to knit some. You know, you said oh, something I want pretty. Something pretty. I want to knit something yeah. pretty. So I. I feel pretty. Put in an order at West Yorkshire Spinners. I've used their yarn before and loved it. I've used that yarn before. Yeah, it's lovely, lovely yarn. Um, so I got this one for Dan to knit some socks. It's Air Valley DK. And this is the rainbow colourway. And it's 230 metres, 252 yards, and it's 75% wool, 25% nylon. You can see that. And this is the rainbow colourway. So I'll hold it up. Look at that. It was in a ball, but I've caked it up because I think they're prettier. The only colour I'm not really seeing in there is like a purpley colour, which, you know, is fine. Purpley? Yeah. So you're going to knit some socks in that, aren't you? Thank you. I haven't cast them on yet because... What do you mean you haven't cast them on? Just so that they were ready to go. Yes, I should hope so. But you hadn't decided who they were going to be for, so that's no, I'll why still, I cast them on. I'll consider that before it starts. So that's yours. And then, depends. because... I'd wound that up and it was like DK wear and I thought, oh yeah, I might fancy actually knitting some thicker socks because I've not knit any thick socks for ages and I do like knitting them. So I've got um, to knit down some socks. It's Air Valley again, but this is Aaron. And I've got two balls of this because I wasn't sure. I don't think, I mean, there's 219 yards in there and, you know, Dan has big old feet and I wasn't sure that one would be enough. So I've got two. It's much brighter, actually. I'm just looking at the colours now. It's coming up a bit muted. The, those greens are much brighter, aren't they? Yeah. Really pretty. So I don't cool. know how that's going to knit up. If it's going to kind of stripe a little bit or if it's going to be variegated, I'm not sure. So that'll be exciting. So I've just got to work out how many to cast on for you because I've never knit you like thicker socks. So I'll have a look, I think, at the rye. Is it rye socks? Tin can knits. I've got a pattern for Aaron weight socks, so I might have a look at that and see how many they cast on. Um, so I think I'm going to be knitting some thicker socks. Cool. For it. Cool. Yeah. Well, I think the lesson hath ended. Well, the only other thing I've got, 
And I did purchase this, but there was a reason. I was talking about my shawl pattern and a nail interface. And um, I did have to buy some yarn to knit the prototypes and I bought some yarn and then decided it, that it was too heavy a weight. So I kind of made a mistake, but you know, we're, we're only human, aren't we? But I, I, I am gonna use this. And I've never seen this, I say colourway. I mean, I think it has got a hint of colour. It's Madeleine Tosh Vintage and it's Farmhouse White. So, I mean, it is, I mean, it isn't white, I wouldn't say. It's more, it's got a very subtle grey, hasn't it? Yeah. Do you think? Yeah. Um, and I was going to use this for my shawl because I thought, oh, that'd be nice, just a creamy white shawl. But it's too heavy a weight. I went with a DK instead. So I'm thinking I might knit a hat and mittens, matching mittens yeah. with that. Cool. Yeah. So that was my last little thing. It's time for us to say goodbye. I wanted to sing the CBeebies. The time has yeah, come that's what... to say goodnight. <laughs> that's what I wanted to, to say. To say sleep tight. Till the, the morning light. light. Oh, the time. All right, all no, right. No, no, no. <laughs> that's a bit much, isn't it? It's like Disney does a podcast. And I did baking today as well. Uh, well, that may well oh. happen next episode. And what might we cook? Well, I've been. I've had an an urge to bake something that's my one of my favourite, if not the favourite, thing that I would choose. You know, like a tea shop or whatever. Um, and I might do a bakewell tart. Ooh. Not bakewell put. Oh well. yeah, hold on, hold on. You use raspberry jam, don't you? Yes. Do it because we're overloaded with raspberry oh, jam. Right. And once we get rid of that stuff, as we established on the Instagram, what's on your bread? Um, yeah, if you want to find out more about these little Instagram games that we play, you can follow me on the Instagram. Plays. Yeah. He's bonkers, isn't he? Uh, but yeah, we need to get some Bon Marsh. Oh, uh, Bon Marsh, no. Bon Mamon. <laughs> yeah. That is the best one. And, and it's on offer today. It's 170 rather uh, than 220. Gosh, you should have got some. Well, I didn't feel like we could because there was so much. Yeah, but you could have just put it in the cupboard and not opened it. That's true. That's true. Then we would have had four jars of jam. But it keeps. It's jam. It's that a is preserve. True. That is true. Hopefully next time we're in, it will still be on offer. It won't be now, will it? So Bakewell Tart Bakewell next Tart time it might be. And be. I mean, anybody in the UK will know what Bakewell Tart is. But basically, it's a pastry case with a layer of, layer of um, jam. Raspberry jam, I think, is the traditional. And then a frangipan topping with almonds sprinkled on it and mints oh. and gravy it's absolutely gorgeous and you, i mean you can have it as a pudding warm with like clotted cream or custard i want some now or you know cold just as a after with a cup of tea in the afternoon oh, either the episode oh. before or the episode after of that friends episode where rachel accidentally messes up the trifle mm. joey knits just saying someone posted a picture janine is knitting Oh, um, yes. And Joey knits that. with it. Well, I saw a picture yeah. of this the other day. Someone posted it on Instagram, um, and it's clear that neither of them had a clue what they were doing. Well, no, I can't imagine. I can't it's imagine just... Elle McPherson sits down of a no, night I don't imagine and she gets does. her DPNs out. No, no, I don't imagine. On that note, <laughs> we shall say good night, sleep tight, and we'll see you in the morning. <laughs> Bye.